Hello, and welcome to my new texture pack series. This is a series that will go through everything you need to know about making Minecraft texture packs, from custom skies to animated blocks. This will be all covered in this series. So, I mean, this is the very start, so I'm going to be covering the basics of everything. Before you begin to make a texture pack, you will need a few essential things. I have this pack here. It's also going to be in my Discord and in the description of this video, so you can have somewhere to start. This is a blank resource pack, and it has folders and things to just help you guys out. In this pack, you have a few folders and other things. Right now, I will be talking about this, and this is the useful links text file. So, to create and have a Minecraft pack, you do not need this text file. This is just a information thing. So let's take a look in this file. So as you can see, we have a few things in here. UUID generator, Nova resources, my YouTube channel, 7zip, and vanilla Minecraft pack. These are links you can copy into your browser to get some useful information. Some of these are essential for making texture packs. I will have timestamps for these. Please just watch this whole video to just understand all the basics. The UUID generator is essential for creating your own texture packs. You may ask, what is a UUID? It is a universally unique identifier. And what this means is it's a number that is used to identify information in computer systems. We will go more into this later. Next, we have Nova Resources. This is a website where you can find cool, unique items to get motivation, and it helped me to create cool texture packs. There's a lot of unique things in here if you just explore around, and it is pretty useful for starters. Moving on, we have my YouTube channel. This is useful because as this series goes on, I will have some new videos on texture packs that can help you guys out. You can also join my Discord because I have new texture packs and there is feedback there as well. If you guys need help, you can message me. Ideas, we have that. If you guys have cool texture packs ideas, that will be all in the Discord, so just make sure to check that out. Alright, now we have 7zip. This is also essential for making a texture pack. 7zip is a free and open source file achiever. For our purpose, this is used to group all the files and put them into Minecraft. I will go more into detail soon. And lastly, we have the vanilla Minecraft pack. This is useful to see where files go and to see what type of file they are. This is also great to look back on to see where folders are and of course where everything goes so you don't mess anything up. Overall, this is a great tool for beginners and it also helps people who have been doing this for a while, such as me. I use this almost every time I do a resource pack. All right, now let's install 7zip. I have a tutorial in the description. If you need it, you can watch these steps. If you're confused, go watch the tutorial. It's like two minutes long. So I'm gonna give the few simple steps here. So step one, internet search 7zip. I will have that in the description. Click on the top link, that's where the description goes. Then click download. You're normally gonna want the 64-bit one. You're gonna open it and give it permission to run. Guys, just make sure you look back on that tutorial to make sure you're downloading it correctly. If you have it downloaded, you can right click on this blank resource pack and as you can see here there's a small 7zip option in here we have a few options the options we will be using are add to archive and this is for zip folders and a few other types of folders. now we will be downloading the vanilla minecraft pack when you get onto this page it's going to be in the description you want to scroll down to where it says download these zips of the resource packs and behavior packs and get creative. That's what we're gonna do guys. We're gonna download this resource pack. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be downloading it into my desktop so you can see everything right there. Doesn't matter where you download it as long as you can get to it later. So it's gonna download as a zip file. 
So we're gonna make sure our seven zip works here. So we're gonna right click on the file, the zip file that we just downloaded, the vanilla resource pack. And we're gonna go on to seven zip and extract files. Then you can choose where you want it to be unzipped. I will be putting everything on my desktop for the purpose of this video. So now we will have everything ready to start making your own texture pack. I'm quickly going to go over all of these files and what they do. So in this blank resources file, we have these four files. We have gone over the useful links and we will go over the pack icon. This is a PNG file. And what this means is, I mean, this is what Minecraft runs off of. If you have a program to edit these, use that so you're familiar with it. I have some free programs in the description. For the sake of this video, I will be using paint.net. I use paint.net for Minecraft textures, so I'm going to right click it and select open with paint.net. If you're using another program, you can right click it open with that other program you're using, obviously. So, but paint.net is great for Minecraft textures because you can create layers and you have blending options with those layers. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. I'll get into that later in the series. So I'm gonna be quickly editing this and make it its own unique logo. I'm also going to have a small tutorial on how to do this right after I, this you know text dialogue so if you guys don't want to see that just skip to 15 minutes and 34 seconds but if you guys don't know how to edit things or you want to be using paint.net just watch this quick thing to learn how to use it all right so on opening this my paint.net may look different than yours as you can see i have a few things here I have my layers on the bottom right, my color palette on the bottom left, and my toolbar on the top left. I also have additional options across the top. In the top right, you have these four icons. When they are blue, they are open. The hammer is my toolbar on the top left, and etc. Looking at this, we have the canvas with the classic Minecraft block. I'm sure you've seen this somewhere in Minecraft. So if we go to the rectangle select tool and click and drag from one side to the other on the bottom left, we can see some information on how the tool works. And when we select the whole canvas using the rectangle select tool, we can see the size on the bottom left. We can see the size is 128 pixels by 128 pixels. It may be 256 pixels, it may be 64 by 64 pixels, but all of these numbers are part of the geometric sequence. This is essential to know. The geometric sequence is an ordered list of numbers in which each term after the first is found by multiplying the previous one by a fixed non-zero number called the common ratio. Now you may be asking, but Bob, why do we need to know this? Guys, the reason why we need to know this is because Minecraft runs off of this. Basically, the classic grass texture is a 16 pixel by 16 pixel. If you want to increase the detail of the grass block, you can't make it a 20 by 20. That's just not how it works. It needs to be part of the geometric sequence. The size of most used texture packs are 16x, 32x, 64x, 128x, 256x, and etc. If we want a smaller file to go with the theme of Minecraft, we can change this. In the top left, we have an image, or like the image icon in the top left. You guys see that? Here are a few options. We will be using the resize image. We can choose either resize image or canvas size. They both roughly do the same thing. I'll be using the canvas resize. 
Here we have a few options. Make sure the maintain aspect ratio is selected. If we change the width or the height when this is selected, it will be the same thing because it's maintaining that aspect ratio. I'm gonna make it a 64 by 64. From here, we will notice it has sliced the image down. I'm going to make a small logo. To do this, I am selecting to create a new layers. Layers are very important and you should use them whenever you can. These are used to, you know, obviously select multiple things, to select one thing, to organize. These are super useful. And this is why this website, or, you know, this is why paint.net is just really, really good. I can deselect the check mark on the layer to make it non visible. I'm going to make a cool shape. In the toolbar, we will select the shape tool that's in the very bottom. On the top, we have some settings. I'm going to make my shape an arrow. When I click and drag to make the arrow, you notice this blur. Up in the top, we have this little square here. If you disable it, you now will have no blur as shown here. Now that I have the arrow, I will make a new layer with the new shape. I want a star. So to do this, I will choose the star in the shapes tool. I can change the brush width to make it look thicker or skinnier. This may look messy, but if we deselect the first layer, it is just a star. I can erase the part where it goes into the star. I can lower the opacity of the star to see where to erase on the arrow. Now that it is erased, I can put up the opacity to obviously see it. I'm going to merge the layers to work with them together. Follow my cursor to see where that is. From here, I will use the magic wand tool to select the inside of the arrow. In my color palette, I change the colors to the inside. I want a nice blue to dark blue color. I can go to my gradient tool and make a gradient. More gradient options are on the top left. I'm going to make a yellow star so I can get two yellow colors from the color palette in the bottom left. There's a more options tab so you can customize your color further. So I'm going to select a new gradient option and use that. The brighter color will be in the middle of the star to give it that star effect. You can swap you know, from one color to the other from simply clicking one mouse button or the other mouse button because there is two palettes. From here, I want an outline, so I'm doing Control A to select everything on that layer, Control C to copy this whole layer because it's all selected. Then I want to create a new layer, then Control V to paste it into the background layer. I'm going to use the move tool to move it down and to the right. This creates a 3D look. Now I can deselect the first layer and use the paint bucket to fill in the new layer in black. I can also go to adjustments, brightness and contrast, and change those settings. Now I'm going to merge them and create a new background layer. I want the background to look like stars. I am going to make a background a dark gray and use the paintbrush tool to make yellow stars. I can change the fill preset to give it a cool effect. I'm using the percent grade 20 to make a nice star pattern. 
you can also change the hardness and size there. This is a cool background for me. When saving it, make sure to follow these steps. Merge the layers correctly and Control shift s to save as a PNG. Make sure it's a PNG, guys. To get better at using this, just make random shapes and use your imagination. With all editing programs, your mind is the limit, so just try new things and you'll get better at it. So now that we have the image saved, we can move on to the manifest.json. This is a text file that shows Minecraft where and what it is, you know, kind of just where it goes. It's just the coding basic for it. By opening this, you can see a few things. You can change the name, description, and the UUID. You can change the name to the title of your pack. You know, as some examples are like my Volpecula 16X. That would be the title. The description would be like made by Vol123. The description is where you site where you got textures. Um, additional things about the pack or the creator, you know, stuff like that. So every time you change the pack and you're ready to put it into minecraft you have to change the uuids you can find the uuid generator in the description it's also literally in the other code we just went over that so you guys want to open that it's in the description refresh the page copy that number paste it into one of the uuid numbers and do that with the second one as well with another randomly generated code as shown here so now that you have the pack icon the title and everything now all we need is the textures in this textures file you can have a lot of different files so it may get confusing you can always look back on the vanilla minecraft folder to see where everything goes so for the sake of this video I'm gonna be making a cool apple texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto the vanilla resource pack, search those files, figure out where they are, like as in they're both in the items. So I can copy them and paste them into this new folder and create a items folder for this pack. So now that I have all of these textures in here where they need to go, all I have to do is change what they look like. So now I'm gonna open it in Paint 3D because that's the software I use. And since I've already done a brief tutorial on this, I'm just gonna do a quick time lapse with some tips shown below. I hope you enjoy. select both of these edges holding control has a little plus right there holding all has a minus so you can like select them like multiple things so maybe i want this to be a little bit darker paint bucket paint bucket colors in here I mean that would look pretty cool so you got like two colors have a nice cool apple gradient I'm actually gonna just save that all right guys so now that we have our texture in here. Now it's time for the 
most important step, but it's also the easiest step. So it, it is a little bit confusing sometimes, but basically if you have 7-zip installed, you're going to want to right click it, but once you right click it, 7-zip, add to archive. From here, you're going to rename it .mcpack. No caps or spaces, just like that. These settings can be fine. You can also rename what you want it to be, like cool apples or you know something like that. From here, I can just press OK, and it is going to convert into a resource pack. So from here, obviously, you could just double click it to open Minecraft. So I will see you when it opens. All right, so as you see in the top left, says failed to import duplicate pack detected all right so this may happen to you so i'm going to run down what the issue is so the issue is when i was obviously like recording this video i've already made the pack and if i was to look in this pack and these two uuids are the same as these two so that is the problem if it says duplicate pack detected so there is two solutions to this one is you can go into minecraft and delete the you know the resource pack that i had right here that's a solution that you can do or another solution that you can do is go to your uuid generator right here Refresh, copy, go into here, and just paste them in. It is a tedious task, but it is very easy, and it takes a few seconds. So from there, we could just delete this, but from here, we can go into 7-zip, add to archive like we just did, and rename it to .mcpack just like that so we're going to open it again and open up minecraft so from here it's going to say import started and successfully imported cool apples so from here that was the old one here is the new logo it's actually a pretty cool logo <laughs> all right so in here, just, you know, you can go into a random world to obviously see your textures. So as you guys can see, my golden apple texture looks just like it should. And obviously the enchanted apple is the same as the golden apple. So that is super cool. You guys got your own little apple texture. And this is actually a pretty cool texture. I might put this on my discord if you guys want to use this apple texture but guys it really is that simple to just get started on a texture pack and literally two minutes of the video was creating this texture and another two minutes was putting it into minecraft so once you have everything done you can create texture packs so quickly guys so that's gonna be the end of this episode one if you guys want to comment what i should do next like say you guys want me to do some cool armor tutorials some sword tutorials some enchant glint tutorials um sky tutorials just let me know in the comments let me know in the discord and i'll see you in the next one